If you look online, you can find plenty of lists ranking the greatest players of all time. And of course, there's a lot of nuance to factor in on each list. Some players have the luxury of longer, healthy careers, while others weren't as fortunate, which naturally affected their rankings and their statistics. But what if we disregarded all of that and simply evaluated players based on their peak? Who was the best when they were at their best? Obviously, this is a very subjective video, as there is no definitively perfect list, as much as many of you would like to think it's yours. With that being said, this is just my list, based on my limited experience. Let me know in the comments who you think is too high and who's too low for a basis. To start with, I'll be looking at what I think is the best three-year stretch from each player and build my rankings from there. Playoff success isn't the only factor or the ultimate factor, but it can certainly help, so let's get into it. Number 15. Tim Duncan The big fundamental was the model of consistency for NBA big men, but his peak wasn't too shabby either as it includes an NBA championship and a finals MVP. Specifically, I can't stop speaking highly enough about his ridiculous final series in 2003 as he absolutely dominated the New Jersey Nets in just about every way that a big man can. Although his regular season numbers were solid over that three-year stretch, they're not necessarily the most mind-blowing compared to the 14-team players ahead of them, which is what holds him back somewhat despite his defensive prowess and postseason success. Number 14. Elgin Baylor Although Baylor was only 6 feet 5 inches tall, in many ways he dominated the game like a big man. He sometimes posted stat lines that even rivaled Wilt Chamberlain. For a player his size or smaller, he was arguably the greatest rebounder the game had ever seen, and there are few players who could score as explosively as he could. You do need to consider that scoring numbers and rebounding totals were significantly more inflated during this era, as the pace of play was extremely fast, players played for more minutes, and field goal percentages were typically lower, adding to the number of boards for him to secure. Regardless, he was one of the best talents and deserved to be high on this list. Number 13. Moses Malone of the centers that are rarely talked about, Moses is definitively the greatest, as he crushed his opponents on the boards and even more impressively on the offensive end. During this stretch, he was a back-to-back -back MVP and won the NBA championship with the 76ers. He was a solid defender compared to the rest of the league, but compared to the peaks of the centers ahead of him, he left a bit to be desired, as he didn't have the athleticism to block as many shots as several other greats. Regardless, some of the things Moses did well, he did better than anyone else, which is enough to put him this high on my list. Number 12. Giannis Antetokounmpo This may seem high to some, but when you look at his recent three-year body of work, there's very little that Giannis didn't accomplish. He won MVPs, Defensive Player of the Year, and an NBA championship while putting up one of the all-time great finals performances. When you look at the combination of his scoring and rebounding, he put up numbers that we hadn't seen consistently since Moses Malone in the 1970s. Along with everything I previously mentioned, he's also insanely efficient from the field. Of course, there are his usual criticisms about his inefficient shooting from three-point range and from free throw line. If Giannis could do those things efficiently as well, then we'd probably be looking at a top three peak instead of the top 12. With that being said, I'm very comfortable with this location for the Greek Freak. Number 11, Oscar Robertson. This six foot five point guard is yet another great who benefited from an era of inflated statistics. But even with that, you gotta appreciate the fact that this man averaged a triple double for basically the entirety of his prime. Oscar did just about everything for the Cincinnati Royals during that time. In many ways, he was the Tim Duncan of point guards, as he wasn't very flashy, but had great fundamentals, was very methodical, and was extremely effective. Now, on to the top 10. Number 10, Steph Curry. Starting out at number 10 is the still active Warriors legend Steph Curry. If we're looking at single seasons alone, Steph Curry's 15 to 16 season is top three in my opinion, as it was arguably the most offensively efficient season in NBA history. It's still the highest scoring 50, 40, 90 season of all time. His 2015 and 2017 seasons weren't quite as strong statistically though, which drops him just to the edge of the top 10. Most people recognize that Curry wasn't the greatest on-ball defender in his prime, but he still anticipated well and found plenty of opportunities to cause turnovers, as he was consistently among the league leaders in steals per game. Number 9. Magic Johnson What is there to say that you don't already know about Magic? He was a constant triple-double threat and had arguably the greatest court vision that the game of basketball has ever seen. 
During Magic's prime, he ran a Showtime Lakers offense that had an incredibly unique style. Nearly every time the Lakers secured a defensive rebound, they treated the possession like a track meet, and it was especially Magic who was pushing that tempo. During this stretch, he led the Lakers to back-to-back -back championships and was the finals MVP in 1987. Along with that, he had some of the best postseason performances during that streak, including his game winner over Boston in Game 4 of the 87 Finals. Magic could have been higher on this list and honestly on just about every one of my lists if he had been a much better defensive player, as Magic was basically never known for locking down his opponent. With all things considered, having the ninth greatest peak as basically a one-way player is a pretty darn impressive feat. Number 8. Hakeem Olajuwon The Dream is widely recognized as the most skilled center to ever play, as his footwork was unmatched even by smaller guards. At his peak, he was averaging just a few points short of 30 a game, and amazingly, that was his worst end of the court, as Hakeem was a shot-blocking machine averaging nearly 4 per game. He was also quick with his hands, which helped him be among the league leaders in steals. One thing that isn't often mentioned about Hakeem is the fact that he's one of the most clutch legends as he always shined brightest in the postseason. During this postseason stretch, he dominated every legitimate big man who stood in his path, like David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, and Shaquille O'Neal. His soft touch allowed him to be a relatively reliable free throw shooter as well. Simply put, there were no holes in Hakeem's game. Number 7. LeBron James LeBron's claim to fame is certainly his longevity, as he's averaged at least 25 points per game for his last 19 seasons straight. By the time his career is done, LeBron will have an argument for the claim of the greatest career in NBA history, although I don't think these three seasons should be ranked as high. It's certainly incredible to say the least. LeBron put up insane numbers during that stretch, mostly from an efficiency standpoint, as he shot a ridiculous 55.5% over those three years. That's a level of efficiency that's usually only matched by centers and not wing players who are averaging close to 30 a game. As the anchor of the Big 3 Heat, LeBron won back-to-back -back championships during this stretch and won both finals MVPs. He was also the Defensive Player of the Year runner-up in 2013, which many people think he should have won. Number 6. Kobe Bryant I know, I know, some of you will say I'm biased towards Kobe Bryant for ranking his peak this high, and to be real with you, maybe subconsciously I am, but I just think this peak stretch from Kobe is so underappreciated. Make no mistake that 06 and 07 squad is the top picking lottery team if Kobe isn't on it. Other than Lamar Odom, the rotation of starters those years included a Smush Parker, Kwame Brown, Chris Mim, and Chucky Atkins. The fact that the Mamba was able to lead that group to 46 wins in a tough Western Conference, to me, is one of the all-time great achievements. In 06, Kobe averaged 35.4 points a game, which is the second highest by a guard in league history. Some say that he stat-padded on a bad team, but I would argue the opposite. Kobe averaged that many points in spite of the fact that no defense respected his teammates, and Kobe was facing doubles and triples teams on a nightly basis. Scoring under those circumstances is not easier, but far more difficult. Despite regularly achieving score feats that we hadn't seen since Wilt Chamberlain, Kobe was still first team all defense each and every one of his peak years. That two-way aspect to Kobe's prime is simply not appreciated enough. Number 5. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar the captain is probably most famously known for his bald-headed days as a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, but a young Kareem in Milwaukee was a completely different beast. He was putting up astonishing scoring and rebounding numbers. He was also an elite rim protector and was revered for his shot-blocking ability. In 1971, he won the NBA championship as a member of the Bucks, which is widely recognized as one of the greatest teams of all time, and he was named the Finals MVP. He was absurdly efficient during this three-season stretch, and it makes sense since he utilized arguably the most indefensible shot of all time, the skyhook. Based on his style, he was one of the more offensively predictable players, but with that being said, there was almost nothing the defender could do to stop it. Number 4. Larry Bird I usually don't see Bird's prime ranked as high as this, but if you ask me, at his peak, there was very little that Larry Legend couldn't do. He was a lethal shooter, an elite facilitator, arguably the greatest rebounding small forward ever, and a pretty solid defender as well. He always played with hustle and heart. What's probably the most impressive aspect of his peak, though, was his efficiency numbers. Averaging 50, 40, 90 percentages over the course of one season is historic and impressive, but Larry is the only player on this list who did it over the entire course of his peak. In a sense, 
You can make a decent argument that Bird is the most efficient all-around scorer that the game has ever had. During his peak, Bird led his Celtics to the NBA Finals twice, including the 1986 Finals where his Celtics won the NBA championship, and some basketball fans even consider that team to be the best that there ever was. Number 3. Wilt Chamberlain If we're going off regular season stats alone, Wilt would easily take the top spot, as his peak numbers are something that have only been rivaled in video games. For example, how about this stat? In this three-year peak of Wilt's career, he scored at least 50 points in a remarkable 83 games. The rest of the players on this 15 greatest list combined only had 77 games. The guy scored, rebounded, and blocked shots like no one else ever could. I could continuously drop numerous stats and facts just to prove that point. Sure, stats were inflated a bit during Wilt's era, but they weren't that inflated. Much of what he accomplished was due to his incredible size, strength, speed, stamina, and overall athleticism. The reason why Wilt isn't number one on this list is that he simply couldn't replicate that same level of success in the postseason, as his numbers usually dropped off in the playoffs. Of course, a stronger level of competition has something to do with it, but I also think that it had to do with Wilt's ridiculous minutes workload during the regular season. So, when the playoffs were finally underway, he was usually pretty gassed at that point. Regardless, based on what he was able to accomplish in his prime, there's just no way I could leave him outside of the top three spots. Number 2. Shaquille O'Neal During his prime years in Los Angeles, Shaq was the perfect blend between strength and athleticism. At times, it felt like I was genuinely watching a monster out there on the court unfairly dominating the smaller competition. Shaq was such a unique and transcendent force that he completely controlled the way games were played and even how the league was shaped in that era. Western Conference teams were making off-season acquisitions with the sole intent of slowing Shaq down. In that three-year run, the Diesel dominated regular season offensively and defensively while putting up these monstrous numbers. But he's in the number two spot not because of his regular season impact, but because of his postseason. Shaq's three-peat performances in the NBA Finals are simply legendary, as he broke records and the Eastern Conference centers could do nothing to slow him down, even ones like Dikembe Mutombo, who won the Defensive Player of the Year. Not only was Shaq constantly producing for his team, but opponents were constantly fouling out in desperate attempts to slow him down by sending him to the free throw line. In those three seasons, Shaq won a scoring title, he was the Defensive Player of the Year runner-up, he won a League MVP award that was nearly unanimous, and he won three straight titles and was the Finals MVP each time. Honestly, I doubt I'll see a force like Shaq again at the center position for as long as I live. Number 1. Michael Jordan I'm gonna be honest, I did not want to put Michael Jordan in the number one spot on this list. I wanted to put someone different for the sake of making this video more interesting or doing something more controversial for the sake of generating more comments, but after I thoroughly thought it through, I just couldn't justify it. Michael Jordan had the greatest peak in NBA history because it was basically a flawless three-year run of success. Over that stretch, Jordan won the league scoring title all three seasons. He was first team all defense all three seasons. He won the NBA championship all three seasons. He was the finals MVP all three seasons. And he broke records in the NBA finals. Yeah, you guessed it. All three seasons. You can make an argument against it if you want. But personally, I'm not seeing it. So what do you guys think? How is your list different from mine? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always and make sure to like and subscribe for more.